All right, so as you can see here, I have uh, a number of supplies so that we can go ahead and learn how to terminate a twisted pair cable. And the first item that I have here uh, is a cable. And I will tell you that this is, you know, obviously just a small little piece of a cable that I've cut out for the purposes of demonstrating. Typically, the first thing you'd want to do is make sure that you had a cable that was not just as long as you need, Okay, so in other words, if you know you need a six foot patch cable, you want to make sure that this is not only six feet, but you'd probably want to make sure that it was seven or eight feet. So you have a little extra in case you make a mistake. Uh, and then you'll also see that we're going to be cutting some of this cable away as part of the process. The next item I have here is what is most commonly known as a crimping tool, although this particular crimping tool I like to use it because it's a, it's a multi-purpose tool. Uh, this tool, besides crimping, okay, which that's right here where you see that RJ45 looking hole, that's where we're going to do the crimping, and we'll see that in a little bit. But we also have a stripper here, so this can be used to help strip away the cable. And then we also have a cutter where we can just cut the cable. And I actually don't use either of those when it comes to what we're going to do here with the twisted pair cable, but this last hole right here, okay, this, uh, this little hole right here, this is the Cat 5 stripper. Okay, and so what I'll actually show you what that's for right now. Let me go ahead and open this up. If I take my Cat 5 cable and I put it into that hole, squeeze down, and then I'm just going to twist it around. Okay, that's all I'm doing, real simple, just twist it. I'm going to keep holding it shut and pull away. I've now stripped away the outer insulation, and here is where we have all of the various twisted wires. Okay. Now, one thing I will also point out is that I didn't strip it away far enough. Okay, so I'm going to strip it away a little more, but let me come back to that. Uh, I want to show you that I also have just a standard pair of scissors. I'll explain exactly why I'm using those. Here, I have RJ45 jacks, and I have three of them laid out here. And the reason is because, well, you would need one for each end of the cable that you were creating, and I like to always have at least one extra. Again, this doesn't always go perfectly. Sometimes we make a mistake, and then you don't want to have to go somewhere else and uh, have to go fetch another RJ45 jack. I'd rather just have it available. The only other item that I have here is um, just a little note card, just a little sheet of paper, and this is my little cheat sheet. Okay? These letters that are on here really just show you the various colors that I was showing you just a little while ago up on the screen. Okay? Now, if you are terminating twisted pair cabling regularly, you know, if you're doing it every day, well then memorizing the order of the wires will come naturally. But in my case, since I only do it every once in a while, I don't have it memorized. I like to have my cheat sheet here. Even when I think I have it memorized, I would much rather have it written down in front of me and do it correctly than to think I've done it correctly, only to go plug it in and find out my cable doesn't work. All right, so let's go ahead and really get into the process. Now the first thing is, like I said, we have to take our cable and we have to strip away the outer insulation. And I will tell you that when I'm doing this, okay, I intentionally didn't do it this way the first time through, but when you're trying to figure out like how much to strip away, you basically just want to do too much. Okay, so you're going to see I'm going to go way into the cable here. And I'm going to twist it like I did a moment ago and pull it away. It also pulls away a lot easier when you have more to pull. And you'll notice that I now have quite a bit of wire. Okay, way more than what you would need to go into one of these little jacks. And that's okay, because in a little bit, we're going to trim this down to being just the right size. The next step is you need to untwist the wires. Okay, and this can take a little bit of time and a little bit of doing. So let me go ahead and untwist each of these. I will tell you that besides the eight wires themselves, like we have in this particular cable, uh, other cables sometimes will also have extra uh, little sometimes there'll be an extra piece of foil, which is considered sometimes to be an extra piece of shielding. Uh, sometimes you'll have a string. Uh, that string is just to sometimes pull away at things. 
there's a lot of extra little items that you'll sometimes find inside these cables. This particular one, it's just the wires. So I'm going to untwist these now and, and bear with me. It takes just a moment to go through and, and get all eight of these open. And so now I have the eight wires all separated. And you'll notice, by the way, when they're separated, you can really start to see the different colors. Here we have just the solid blue, and here is a blue and white striped. And sometimes it's a little bit more clear than others. Uh, this particular one is almost a solid white, and you just barely see the blue on there. Green and green and white, orange, orange and white, brown and brown and white. So I have them all on here. The next thing I need to do is I need to put them in order. So I need to go to my little cheat sheet. Let me go ahead and move my crimper out of the way. And I noticed that the first wire that I want to do all the way on the left would be green and white. So we take that wire. And this is kind of the tricky part. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm not real good at this. My fingers don't work as well as some other people that I, so I know people that can whip this out like crazy. And I'll, I'll mess up a couple times. Uh, but here I have the green and white wire. And I'm going to kind of just try to pull it so it's nice and straight. Next, I have green. So I want to get green next to it. Okay, and again, sorry if I'm a little shaky for you here, but my hands aren't that good. Next is orange and white. And, you, and so sometimes you got to kind of twist these around. So I'm going to bring around orange and white, put that next to it. And one thing I find, and I'm going to show you at this point, is if you start kind of doing this, just to kind of give it a little bit of, you know, flexibility, because these wires can be stiff sometimes. Uh, it helps you out. Uh, next, I want to go with a solid blue. So I can already see this is going to get a little tricky because I have blue and white. So let me get that out of the way. Get a blue over here. Now, one thing that I did, and sometimes you want to avoid doing this, you'll notice I let go of all the wires. Just by simply letting go, sometimes they'll fight with you and they'll go back to where they think their original position should be. So I'm just going to kind of double check my work. Green and white, green, orange and white, blue. We're still good. Blue and white is next. Then we have orange, so this one we got to twist all the way over to here. And this again is where it can start to get really tricky, and it's also very easy to lose your place. These wires will bounce back to where they think they should be. Okay, so I'm going to work it a little bit. Next we have brown and white, and then brown. So brown and white, and then brown. All right, so let's let's get these all in order. Work them in a little bit. You don't want to work them in too much. Uh, you, know, you don't want to completely take away from the integrity of the wire itself. You don't want to accidentally have the wire snap inside. And now I need to pretty much kind of hold these with my thumb, smooth them out as much as I can. And now this is where we are going to go ahead and trim away the extra. I noticed that my blue and my blue and white here keep wanting to twist around each other. <laughs> So let me go ahead and straighten this out a little bit. Now this is where, now I could go back to my crimping tool. It does have a, a cutter on it, where it's just a, a razor blade that I'm going to cut in. But I don't like using that because it, it's kind of bulky, and I've got this tiny little area to get in. And you want to be as straight across as you can be with your cut. So I've noticed that just plain old scissors, you know, these are very small wires, and any pair of scissors, even a cheap pair, should be able to do the job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do my best to make a perfectly straight cut. And I'm going to try to do this over the table, okay, because these little wires, they kind of go everywhere. They get in the carpet. You don't want to uh, be stepping on them when the vacuum cleaner doesn't get them because it can sometimes hurt. So I'm slowly cutting through here, just trying to make a nice, even cut. All right. I lost a couple wires there. Uh, I want to reconfirm, and this is really hard to show you, but I'm looking at it, and I can see it's green, white, and then green, orange, white, blue, blue and white, orange, brown and white, and brown. So right where I cut, I have the colors correct. And now you don't want to lose them. This is where it gets tricky. You want to take your RJ45 jack with the clip pointing down towards the floor. You want to carefully slide these eight wires in. And what you're going for is you want them each to go into their own little slot in here. Okay, And so again, this can get tricky. They can get sometimes rearranged or lost. But we're going to slide it in. And if you've done this correctly, and it takes a little just getting used to 
feeling out exactly how far to cut. Here's what you want to have happen. You want to make sure that all of those wires make it all the way into where they're touching the pins. And you also want to make sure there's still some outer insulation that makes it into the jack. Uh, you may have seen a cable, you may have come across a cable at some point where you can like see the bare wires dangling out and what happens there? Those tend to be cables that don't last very long, right? They don't look like they're of solid integrity. Well, they're not. So you want to give this a little strength, a little integrity. Again, you can kind of eyeball it and I'm, it's probably hard to see here, but again, you want to kind of look and make sure the colors look like they are correct, verifying with the order that they're supposed to be in. And I'm looking and it looks like they are all correct. And this is where we go to the crimping tool and actually as a crimping tool. What you want to do is go ahead and put the RJ45 jack into the hole that it looks like it matches. And it only goes in one way, by the way. This side doesn't work. Go in this side, push it all the way in, and then you just simply squeeze. Now, depending on the crimping tool, sometimes you just squeeze and you're just supposed to squeeze you know, all the way down. And other times you'll have a crimping tool. This one doesn't, but I, I used to own one that did. That actually has a click to tell you precisely, OK, you've crimped down tight enough. And the idea behind the crimping tool, now that I've squeezed, let me pull this out, is it's pinching this RJ45 jack together. And what's inside here, where all these wires were put in, are, are little teeth. And those teeth are now poking into the colored wires, and that terminates the jack. Oh, and another thing it's doing is it's also pinching it at the top here so that it doesn't come out, okay? This is the part where I get nervous and I go, it doesn't come out, and then poof, it pulls out. It happens all the time. But you do want to test it. You don't want to really yank on it and ruin your wire, but you want to give it a little bit of a tug, make sure this is solid. So all I would need to do at this point is, right now I've terminated this, I would now go to the other side of my cable, and if I wanted to make a straight through cable, I would do the exact same process with the same colors. And if I wanted to create a crossover cable, well then I would have a separate 568B set of colors on my cheat sheet here for the other side. Other than that, you know, it's just a matter of taking our cable and going over and plugging it in and see if it works.